Hello and welcome to Backstage with Gig Performer. My name is Brett Pontecorvo and we are here every Thursday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And today we are talking all about how to troubleshoot backline gear. And if you've ever been on a uh, gig where you're using someone else's gear, there's a bit of uncertainty that always kind of comes into play where you're like, man, you know, what's going on here and getting situated is... um, can take a bit of a, you know, a minute. So uh, before we jump in here, uh, do let us know in the comments, have you ever had a massive issue using backline gear? Uh, What was your biggest failure? Uh, Do let us know that (laughs) in the comments. Would love to hear uh, what you guys have to say. Um, We're about to jump into troubleshooting, and most of this content is based on a blog written by co-founder David Jameson. So if you are interested in checking out that blog, we will um, link it in the description below so you can check it out. Um, But when you are dealing with troubleshooting backline gear and you get to the venue, you plug in your keyboard and it is not working, um, that's an issue. So we have to kind of have a, a way to methodically go through things so that we don't miss any components. Uh, Now, when you're dealing with Gig Performer, we have a couple of things built in that help you quickly get backline gear set up. And the first one of those things is uh, the Rig Manager. So um, we have a whole video on the Rig Manager, so I'm not going to go over this again uh, in depth here. But uh, just to kind of give you an idea, uh, the Rig Manager is what allows you to come up with names for your MIDI controllers um, rather than just have it be the actual MIDI controller. So for example, um, you can see here that I have Keylab and that's the Keylab 88. And if I were to move to another place, I could change the keyboard that I'm using that would correspond with this particular alias. Um, again, there's a whole video I'll make sure to link down below, but your first stop when you're plugging in your backline gear is to use your rig manager and I highly recommend doing so. However, If that's not working, we need to move forward from there. Um, I typically like to start in Gig Performer because um, when you have Gig Performer up and running, um, it kind of gives you some information. So right now, everything is working just fine, actually. Um, But what I am going to do is I am going to set this uh, so that it is no longer working just fine. So sort of simulating um, the... Uh, things that can happen, right? So um, when I start hitting the keys on my keyboard right now, um, I will see that uh, I've got up here on the top left-hand corner of my screen, uh, that green light is blinking, but uh, no sound is coming out. So that is at least telling me that the keyboard is sending MIDI. Now, if you see that, um, you got to stop and ask yourself a couple of questions. So question number one would be, have you mapped perhaps, any keys to widgets? Um, And if so, have you turned on MIDI pass-through or not? Um, Because if you haven't, that's not going to allow those notes uh, to pass through. However, um, that's usually more of an issue when you have a handful of keys not working rather than none of them. So your first stop, if you get this situation, is to simply perform a factory reset on the keyboard because most of the time, something is going on with MIDI channels. Um, which is indeed the case here. So I'm actually going to open up the uh, MIDI monitor, um, and you're going to see that when I hit a key, um, sounds are coming in, uh, or MIDI notes are coming in, rather, but they're all on channel 2, and that is the reason why um, it's not working. So if I come into my wiring view um, here and open up, let's see, contact, um, you will notice that in contact, Um, MIDI channel is set to one. Now I could set this to Omni and that would be part of the, you know, thing. But if you kind of scale this out across a very large set, that's not going to work so well for you. So that's the reason why it's not working. Um, And even if you have uh, VSTs that are responding to different MIDI channels, a factory reset is still going to at least get you to a good starting place. Um, So we've at least verified that the problem in this particular case is that the channel (laughs) is wrong and we need to change it. Now, if for whatever reason you cannot do a factory reset, there are a couple of options here inside of Gig Performer that are going to allow you to re-channelize your live set. Now, this is important 
um, but because we have to kind of choose the right method. So a couple of different ways we can do this. We can do it from the MIDI in block itself, which is great, but doesn't scale as well as some other methods. Um, we can use the MIDI channel constrainer, which is good. Um, very similar, just a little bit more visually there. Um, and then another option we have is to actually just create a separate instance of Gig Performer, which re-channelizes everything. Um, and this actually scales quite well. Um, and then the final option is creating a bit of a Gig Script to deal with this. So um, let's start with the simpler ones here. And we're going to go into our MIDI in block um, and just re-channelize it. So this is um, for worship music. And so this particular setup doesn't have a ton of MIDI in blocks, which makes it a bit easier to deal with um, using this approach. So right now you'll see that I have all of these MIDI channels um, going to where they came from. But if I would like to change that, I can shift click on two and make it one. And now when I press keys, the problem is solved. Um, so really, really easy to do. Um, now, if we come here to the triple dots, you also have the ability to send everything to a particular place. So here, now everything is going to channel one, which is a great way to deal with it. Now, again, this doesn't mean that it's going to change for every single MIDI in block. So um, do that, do with that what you will. This is one option to get things where they need to go. Um, now, another option would be to just put a MIDI channel constrainer in. So um, I'm going to do command P and type constrainer. Um, and you're going to see this little uh, circle pop in here. And I'm going to put that in the pathway for this here. And what I'm going to do is when I double click that, this little dialog box is going to open. And I'm going to check this box that says use a different output channel. So this now is going to take all of those notes coming in and take everything coming in on channel two and pass it through to the grand jury, um, which is great. And when I bypass this, um, it no longer works. So that's another uh, another particular method that could potentially work. Now, if you have a lot of MIDI in blocks, then one of the challenges is how do you quickly do this across um, multiple rack spaces? Um, and the answer is if you have an IAC driver, if you're on a Mac or you have loop MIDI, um, you can actually create a separate is instance uh, that processes your MIDI first. Um, so to just start with, if I pop over into audio MIDI setup here, um, and let's see, um, so in my MIDI studio, um, I have this Keylab virtual IAC driver. Um, I'm sure there are many different tutorials on the internet about how you can create an IAC driver. Um, but if you have it, gig performer will see it. And what you can do, um, is you can take your incoming MIDI and rechannelize it in a separate instance and send it over. So if I come here and I do create new instance, and I'll just call this new channel um, and open it up, um, what I'll be able to do is take my specific MIDI in and create a MIDI out um, that uh, will change the channel. So here's my new instance. And it is empty. And I'm just going to go into the wiring view this. We don't want Omni. Um, but I'll do MIDI in block. Let's see, MIDI in key, MIDI in key lab. Okay, so this is going to take MIDI from my key lab. And then I'm going to do MIDI out. And I'm going to send that to my virtual bus. Okay, and I'm just going to connect these. Now, in the MIDI out dialog, when I double click that, it gives me the option to rechannelize everything to one. So now that you've done that, you are done. You can come back over here into our global rack space, and I'm just gonna go to this MIDI in block and right mouse click and click change MIDI device, and I'm gonna choose that key lab virtual bus. Um, and when I click on that, it's gonna ask me, do you wanna change all similar MIDI uh, in blocks? And I'm gonna say, yes, I do. And I'm gonna say, use current device. Um, and it's going to change everything. And now it's going to work across your whole set. Um, so that is a really easy way um, to do this. <laughs> um, and actually, I'm kind of like, you know, if you're in a pinch and you need to change it across the whole, a whole set, um, this is great. Now, the one other way that you can handle this that I think is compelling um, is to just put in a gig script 
um, and it will let you uh, do this pretty easily. Um, I'm going to leave the gig script in the um, in the description below so you can, you know, do what you will with it. But uh, it's actually very easy. So we're just going to open a gig script and um, we'll put this here. Okay. So gig scripts or scripts in general basically work with this concept that if you are doing a particular thing, then do this. Um, and you have to always state your ingredients. And ingredients are called variables. So for this particular situation, our ingredients are just, it's just our keyboard. And it's whatever it is in your uh, rack space, uh, in your rig manager. So in my case, in my rig manager, I am calling this key lab. And I'm just going to label that it's a MIDI in device alias. Um, and that's that. Now, I want every time a note event occurs it to change the channel right so i'm just going to say on note event which is telling gig performer to look for a note event um note message okay um from key lab what do i want it to do well i want it to change the channel so all i'm going to write here is inject midi event via rig manager and this takes a couple of things here so we just write key lab which is where we want it to go and then m dot with channel one and then end so let's see when i compile that key lab not to case sensitive friends okay so now that i have compiled this gig script, everything that comes into Gig Performer is going to be rechannelized. And when you look at the MIDI monitor, this is all on channel one. Um, but when you look at the settings here uh, for my Arturia, things are coming in on channel two. Um, so that's a really simple way to deal with um, rechannelizing things on the normal. Now, this might not be what's happening. There are a couple of other things to think about that are worth mentioning, okay? So one of them is that every point where information moves from one place to another is a point where something can go wrong. So if you're not seeing on the top right-hand corner um, any MIDI come in, then it's probably a good idea to look at your cables. Um, Alternatively, if you're seeing down here on the bottom right that there's audio, but you're not hearing it, then it's probably a good idea to check your audio interface. So these are some really solid ways to deal with um, the issues of rechannelizing backline gear, especially if you can't do a factory reset, um, which would certainly solve this problem um, on the whole. Uh, friends, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we'll be back next week. Um, shorter episode today, but I hope this is super valuable for you guys. Um, and we'll see you next Thursday.